Greetings, my lovelies. Hi, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to share with you, along with my voice, which I've recovered. Yay! Yay! Now, it is mostly back. It's got a little bit of a hoarseness to it, but I do sound mostly like myself. Today, I'm going to be testing a gadget, and it is this one. It is the classic Vegomatic. As it says on the top, this is a great Popeil product. The Popeil family is a famous one when it comes to gadgets in America. It slices, it dices, and wedges. So I found this at my local thrift store for a whopping $2.99. Based on what I could find on the internet, this is not the first iteration of the Vegematic. I believe this might be the second, and it dates, I think, from the late 1960s, maybe 1969. And let me show you what is inside. At the top here, it says the wedger attachment is optional. So mine only slices and dices. It does not wedge. So here it is. Dun, 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 dun. It also comes with instruction booklet, a little extra piece here. Do not use this machine until you have read the instructions. And replacement order form. So my plan of attack is to see how well this product actually works. And then in this booklet, it actually includes a recipe. So let's go through the pamphlet here. Love this old graphic design. Basically it has a series of rings and you can rotate the rings to vary the type of slice you will get. You can get thin slice, thick slice, and you can actually dice as well. It says to swing the food plunger forward, do not press, then ram down fast and hard with both hands. I'm having a little bit of egg extractor deja vu. If you missed that video, I shall put that link up there and down below. It is very entertaining to say the least. So it includes a couple recipes, one for potato pancakes with style and a Waldorf salad, which has mayonnaise in it, of course, very 1960s. But I think with my choppings, I'm going to test out the potato pancakes recipe. So let's examine the anatomy of the Vegematic food prepper. You unlock it by doing this and it has a spring-loaded, quite noisy plunger, and it has two rings with a set of wires to cut the food. I'm gonna try a thin slice first, so there's that. Here I have my little panoply of ingredients. So I think I'm gonna need a step tool because I'm a little vertically challenged, so I can actually plunge this down. I'm having serious egg extractor deja vu. <laughs> but here we go, so here's this, hopefully I'm in frame. I think I was actually wearing the same shirt in that video too. Whoa. I just really like this shirt, but at any rate. I'm gonna cut this to make a nice flat surface. So that way, when I plunge this through, it's not gonna fly out, right? That's the idea. Ready? Yeah! That is very satisfying. That worked out beautifully. For the recipe, it calls for this to be in miniature cubes. So we're gonna take these thin slices. All right, so restack that. And then we put this back on like that. All right, here we go. Yes. <laughs> oh! That wasn't dice. That's julienne. All right, so now I've got julienne. So if I want this to be miniature dice, I have to take the julienne and put this uh, like that. Now it's getting a little bit more complicated here. Already, I think I would have had this potato chopped if I used a knife. Get a step stool, clip on top. Ugh. <laughs> that one I had to use a little bit more force, but look, there you got it. Beautiful miniature dice. It's a bit messy up here, but yeah. So that's the result of the julienne. And there is the mini dice. Pretty nice. So now that I know how much pressure and force is required to operate this machine, I don't think I need the step stool. Now let's rotate this to position number two, which is the little crisscross position, and that should make french fries. Put that on there. Here we go. Oh, got stuck. Spoke too soon. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, spoke way too soon. Let's do this, ready? Ugh. Look at what happened here. <laughs> so this got stuck up here. That's interesting. The ring is stuck up here. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to do that. I don't think it's supposed to do that. And there you go. You've got perfectly cut 
french fries. This reminds me of the french fry cutter that you see at In-N-Out where they're just like yanking on that thing <laughs> and then it just spits out french fries. This is the thick slice cut. So we'll put a carrot right there. Oof. And you do have to use some force, but there you go. There are some little carrot rings. Those are pretty thick. Let's try doing the carrots on a thinner setting, which is position number one. Because slicing carrots is just so hard that I have to use my Vegematic. <laughs> Ugh. There, and there's a thinner slice cut. Yep, pretty even. It doesn't seem to work as well on carrots. It's a little bit rougher and then you get some of these kind of shaved pieces. Let's try an onion. So I will put it across. Again, it got stuck to the top of the machine. Back onto here and get a mini diced onion. So we're gonna go across the grain here. Ugh. Wow, I can't really imagine little tiny older people using this because you do have to exert a lot of force and it's just kind of violent. It's kind of fun in that sense, but I can't imagine, you know, little granny like anyways, going to all this effort when she could just use a knife. But there you go, your perfectly little dice dice that we'll use that for our recipe. I'm not crying in those infomercials, it's great. It's like, do you hate it when you cry because you're chopping onions? Well, cry no more because now you have the Vegematic. But I'm wearing contact lenses, which makes me pretty impervious to the sulfur gases that are emanating from the onion. And then it reacts with the water, which creates sulfuric acid. That's why you cry. So I can't really test that out. But anyways, here's my chopped Onion, apple, peeled and miniature diced as well. Let's see if I can do the apple without stepping on the step stool. Almost. Nothing pooped out, okay. Okay. Take that, rotate it 90 degrees. Ugh. And now, this is the tricky part. Now I've gotta pick this up and put this in here to get the mini dice. That's the part that's kinda of tedious, like really? Potato, onion. Apple. I've done the thick slice, thin slice, julienne, and french fry, and the mini dice. To make our Swiss style potato pancakes, we're gonna take our egg and separate it and beat up our egg whites. Oops. This is how I like to separate my eggs. Just go in there with my impeccably clean hands, pull out my yolk, wash my hands. I'm gonna add our potatoes, egg yolk, flour. Salt and pepper, onion, apple. Mix that well, nice and bright yellow. And then in this bowl, it says beaten egg white, but it doesn't say beaten to what consistency. So I'll just beat it for a little while. Add that to our mixture, fold that in. So now we're gonna cook our pancakes. I've got my pan heated here on medium high. The recipe calls for shortening, but I am going to use a little bit of coconut oil instead. This is refined coconut oil, so the coconut flavor has been removed, so it doesn't lend any coconut flavor to the actual dish you're cooking. Smells pretty good, actually. In terms of ingredients, it reminds me a lot of a latka. We want to make sure these are cooked all the way through because these are diced potatoes after all. Those actually look pretty good. Those are the Swiss style potato pancakes. You can serve it with a little bit of applesauce or sour cream. And because I have toddlers, I happen to have applesauce. All right, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Eat it while it's hot. And let's try it plain by itself. Itadakimasu. And that's pretty good. And not surprisingly, the flavors are a lot like a latka. A latka is a Jewish potato pancake that's made of shredded 
potatoes with a little bit of onion and often served <laughs> with sour cream or applesauce. Of course, the texture is a little bit different than a latka. This has more of a firmer bite because the potatoes are cut into little cubes, but I am surprised that the onion is not overpowering in this. I thought because of the small dice that it would be a little too strong, but it isn't. And I think perhaps maybe a little bit of apple in there that adds a little bit of sweetness, kind of maybe tones that down a little bit. It's actually pretty good. Let's try some with some applesauce. Mm-hmm, mm. That bite, I got a little bit more onion in it. I think maybe that wasn't a piece that was finely diced. The applesauce is actually really nice with that. Not only does it add just a little bit of sweetness, but it has some acidity as well, which kind of cuts a little bit of the kind of frying flavor in there. It's really nice. I think I prefer the texture of a latka better. I think I like the more homogenous kind of softness of a latka than this. This has more of a bite to it, a little bit more like a corned beef hash or something like that, but flavors are nice. Final thoughts on the Vegematic itself. It did keep its promise of what it's supposed to do in terms of slicing and dicing. I was a little bit skeptical based on the build quality of how well this would work. And it is a little bit flimsy. The plastic parts are a little bit flimsy. The metal parts are quite durable, but it did work. But would I use it in my kitchen? I don't think so. I could easily do all the things that it does with just my knife, and this would just take up room in my <laughs> kitchen. Although if I had a big batch of something, if I was cooking for an army of people, maybe this would save me some time. But I think in that case, I might opt for a food processor because that's even faster. Um, but yeah, if there's a power outage like we just had, then this might be the way to go. So I have a closet full of gadgets, vintage and otherwise, including an ice cream ball, including a cake pan that can make a checkerboard cake, including one that a viewer sent me to make sushi. I have a vintage Japanese shaved ice maker. I also have a vintage peeler called the stripper, I believe. So let me know in the comments which one you'd like to see next. And I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I wouldn't be here without you. And yeah, be sure to follow me on social media so you know what things I'm doing behind the scenes. Share this video with your friends and I shall see you in my next video. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>